Have you ever seen a Gotham like this? An old lady throws a security guard with one hand and robs a bank. Streets are filled with vandalism, looting, and fires. Even the trains are ablaze, and chaos reigns within the police station. All of this is due to a viral weapon explosion, infecting thousands with a blood virus, making them aggressive and superhumanly strong. At this moment, Fox reveals that there is an antidote to the virus, as he had previously worked with Dr. Hugo. Hugo has a habit of researching both poisons and antidotes together, so Fox believes there is an antidote to this virus. However, Alfred has already released Hugo, and they don't know where to find him. Jim says Hugo is cunning and will do anything to escape. Now the Union Station is closed, leaving only the downtown station. Jim believes Hugo should be there. Indeed, Dr. Hugo was buying a ticket here, but he didn't get far before encountering Mooney. Mooney asked Hugo why he was trying to escape when he hadn't finished creating her army of monsters. However, she found the virus Hugo had created intriguing and demanded it from him. Hugo told her that the virus had been taken by the Owl Court, but Mooney didn't believe him, knowing how cunning Dr. Hugo could be. By the time Jim and the others arrived, Mooney had already taken the doctor away. At this time, the staff nearby told Harvey that they left through the underground passage. Soon after, Jim and Harvey intercepted Mooney in the underground tunnels. Dr. Hugo noticed Jim's eyes and realized that Jim had been infected. Mooney also understood that Harvey and Jim were desperate to find Dr. Hugo for the antidote. So she became even more determined not to let Hugo go. Just Fine, as Jim reached you for had his your gun, chance. he was stopped by Free standing nearby. A wall of ice was left in the middle. <laughs> With the high-ranking members of the Owl Court dead, no one was guarding Oswald and Nightma. So the two of them managed to escape smoothly. As soon as they emerged, they started fighting, and it was clear that Nygma had the upper hand. He had brought along Barbara, Tabitha, and Butch. Just as Nygma was about to kill Oswald again, Mooney appeared. Everyone is shocked and afraid as Mooney arrives. She takes Oswald away, and no one dares to stop her. And so, Oswald finds himself back by Mooney's side once again. Miss Mooney! Miss Mooney! Mooney's busy! I'm here now. And she has a vision for Gotham. She sees a city where people like myself. And you are going to help us achieve that. Hugo refused Oswald's invitation. You can torture me all you want. Oswald smiles and says he will fulfill Hugo's request. Do you remember how he received treatment at Arkham Asylum? Oswald brings the equipment used during that time, allowing Hugo to experience the same sensation. Upon seeing the equipment, Dr. Hugo's face turns pale. He knows how agonizing that feeling can be. He begins to beg for mercy, promising to reveal everything he knows to Oswald. But Oswald doesn't give up. He puts the device on Hugo. Dr. Hugo, accompanied by Oswald and Mooney, leads them to the hiding place of the antidote. He took out several bottles of blue potion and told them that it was the antidote for the virus. Mooney excitedly tells Oswald that they are about to become the rulers of Gotham. Oswald tells her that Gotham belongs to Mooney, and he is there to serve her. Mooney, satisfied, prepares to implement her plan with the antidote in hand. Suddenly, a group of assassins appears before them. They brandish their knives and launch an attack. Just then, Jim and Harvey, who received the alarm, arrive at the scene. Jim immediately joins the fight. Jim has been suppressed all along, but he has not lost the title of Gotham Solo King. After being infected with the Alice virus, he has become even more formidable. He gradually loses control and ends up killing Mooney, causing the antidote to fall to the ground. Before dying, Mooney urges Oswald to make the city submit to him, or destroy it if he can't. Oswald is very heartbroken, but he still has feelings for Mooney. He turned around and cursed Jim loudly. However, he did not realize that Jim, 
at that moment, had lost control of himself. Jim no longer cares about their past relationship and tries to strangle Oswald, but Harvey knocks Jim unconscious from behind. At that moment, a large number of police officers arrive and take Dr. Hugo and Oswald into custody. Freeze and Bridget had already left earlier. Harvey asks Dr. Hugo if he can still create the antidote. The doctor tells him that it is possible, but he needs Alice's brother, Jervis. Just as they are about to bring Jervis out of Arkham Asylum, they are intercepted by the cunning Nygma and Barbara. Nygma received news that Dr. Hugo was making the antidote for the virus, with Jervis being the main factor. The current situation was that whoever possessed the antidote would control Gotham. Let's make Gotham bag. The police station had not yet received the news of Jervis being intercepted. Moreover, the police station was in chaos because one officer had been infected. Bruce, who was locked in the interrogation room, took advantage of the chaos and escaped. Bruce arrived at a door labeled Prophecy. Bruce encountered a group of assassins who were dressed similarly to the ones who attacked Mooney before. Guided by an assassin, Bruce entered a chamber where he encountered the enigmatic ninja master. Ra's al Ghul was originally an ordinary person, but he became immortal after accidentally falling into the Lazarus Pool 700 years ago. Influenced by his life experiences, he aimed to create an ideal world. Thus, he established the League of Assassins, preparing to annihilate humanity. Ra's al Ghul not only had vast experiences, but also immense power. The teacher who trained Bruce previously was actually a stand-in for Ra's al Ghul. He was the public face representing Ra's al Ghul. Before his death, he revealed this information to Bruce, which allowed him to arrive at this location. However, Bruce didn't understand why Ra's al Ghul wanted to destroy the Owl Court. He explained to Bruce that it was merely a means to train him. He originally wanted Bruce to be his successor, but he almost disrupted his plan to destroy Gotham. Bruce hastily explained that he didn't mean to, that it was Alfred who interfered. Just as he finished speaking, Alfred was brought in, bound and captive. The master told Bruce that Alfred was right there, and by killing him, he could become the successor. Without hesitation, Bruce picked up a sword and stabbed Alfred. As he looked at the lifeless Alfred, his consciousness gradually awakened. With Alfred's death, Bruce also became completely sober. At that moment, Bruce looked towards the nearby pool of water. Since Ra's al Ghul can become immortal thanks to the water in the pool, it will have the same effect on Alfred. Indeed, Bruce successfully revived Alfred. They received Barbara's negotiation list. Recently, Nygma kidnapped Jervis, who was the only element needed to make the antidote. Therefore, his value was enough to exchange for half of Gotham. However, Jim didn't know how to gather the things Barbara needed. At this moment, he noticed Oswald. He told Harvey that Oswald was the person Nygma cared about the most. They could use Oswald as a bargaining chip to exchange for Jervis. However, Harvey disagreed. He believed that they should leave this matter to Gotham's mayor to decide, rather than taking matters into their own hands. Thus, a disagreement arose between the two. But Harvey forgot about Jim being infected with the virus. This angered Jim, and he grabbed Harvey's collar, ready to strangle him. Fortunately, Jim managed to regain control and asked Harvey to trust him one more time as he didn't have much time left. Seeing this, Harvey reluctantly agreed. Then Jim contacted Nygma and said he wanted to make a deal with Nygma. When Barbara returned, Nygma was nowhere to be found. She asked Butch where Nygma went, and Butch said he was just here. Barbara hurriedly went to check on Jervis, and indeed, he was gone. The most tragic thing in the world is to love someone but have to kill them. Just like Oswald, he loved Nygma, but he had to freeze him. He did it to constantly remind himself not to be blinded by love. As Jim wanted to use Oswald to exchange for Jervis, Oswald was furious and told Jim that he couldn't believe he was being used as a bargaining chip, but Jim told him that sacrifices had to be made for Gotham. They ignored Oswald's anger and forced him into the car. They arrived at the meeting point. Everything was going smoothly until Barbara showed up. Taking advantage of the chaos, Oswald escaped, closely followed by Nygma. But as soon as they stepped out, Oswald knocked Nygma unconscious. When Nygma woke up, 
he found himself handcuffed inside the police car. However, this didn't stop Nygma. He took out a needle hidden in his clothes and quietly opened the handcuffs. Nygma constantly provoked Oswald with his words. Nygma said he knew Oswald had feelings for him, but he could never love a monster. Angered by this remark, Oswald got out of the car. But just as he opened the car door, Nygma knocked him down. Oswald was once again captured by Nygma. Nygma brought Oswald to the same dock where he'd previously pushed him into the water. He believed that this time he would definitely kill Oswald, but there were no bullets in the gun. It turns out that this was all part of Oswald's plan. While Nygma was unconscious, Oswald called Freeze and Ivy. He wanted Nygma to experience the feeling of being in control, suddenly slipping away from him. He asked Oswald if he was willing to kill him. Oswald tells him that he doesn't intend to kill him. He just wants to keep Nygma by his side forever. Shortly after, Freeze froze Nygma. On the other side, Jim took refuge in a warehouse with Jervis. But Barbara and her group continued to relentlessly pursue them. When Barbara chased Jervis, she found that his neck had been cut open. Jim did this because making the antidote didn't require Jervis as a person, only his blood. So Jim took a vial of blood back to the police station. Soon, the antidote was ready, and distribution began on a large scale. Chaos. Britain Gotham began to return to normal. Jim and Leslie injected themselves with the antidote, while Jervis was sent back to Arkham Asylum. Oswald turned Nygma's ice sculpture into a decoration. Bruce Wayne stayed by Alfred's side. In this season's storyline, firstly, Oswald and Nygma, their gradual progression from being kindred spirits to mutually destroying each other. With Nygma's help, Oswald became the mayor of Gotham and the king of Gotham. In their subsequent lives, Oswald developed an attachment to Nygma, which gradually turned into love. But just as Oswald wanted to express his feelings to Nygma, Nygma encountered Isabella, who looked remarkably similar to his ex-girlfriend. Love is selfish, and Oswald schemed to kill Isabella. However, Nygma discovered Oswald's actions and began to seek revenge on him. Not only did he bring Oswald down from the political arena, but he also pushed Oswald into the water. Fortunately, Oswald encountered Ivy, who helped him regain his composure. In the end, Oswald froze Nygma and turned him into a statue displayed in his newly opened bar. Secondly, Bruce, who experienced the fastest growth and the most pain. From being brainwashed by the Owl Court and almost destroying Gotham, to being manipulated by Ra's Al Ghul and nearly killing Alfred, Bruce finally woke up after Alfred's death. But in this process, Bruce's martial arts skills greatly improved. One day, as a family walked through an alley, they encountered a robbery. Just as the robbers were about to shoot, a figure appeared and effortlessly defeated them. When he removed the mask, it was revealed to be Bruce. This signifies that Bruce has begun to become Gotham's Dark Knight. Lastly, there's Jim. Due to Alice's blood, people around Jim, one after another, became infected, including himself. Gotham also teetered on the brink of collapse due to Alice's blood. However, Jim forcefully suppressed the outbreak of the blood virus with his strong will, thus saving the city from the edge of collapse, taking a solid step towards his future as Commissioner Jim. Meanwhile, Barnes, Guilty! the Owl Court, Mooney, Jervis, and Jerome either died or were imprisoned, with only Ra's al Ghul escaping. At the same time, Arkham Asylum reopened its doors.